In our history, there have been places and people that have stood out being giants in which many cultures have rest upon their shoulders. With many of these places having an interesting story to tell, and here on FTD Facts, we are going to talk about one of these giants. A giant that has stood on the ground since ancient times, and that is the country of Myanmar. So hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of FTD Facts. My name is Dave Walpole. For those who are just joining here, this is the channel where we like to talk about, well, people, cultures, and places. Places from things from all around the world and you know what guys I just got to congratulate you guys for actually stepping out of your box and trying to learn about something new a new place a new people so today we are talking about Myanmar a really cool country and has a lot of really interesting features but before I get in this video I just got to ask you guys what are your personal pet peeves I'm trying to think of what I really don't like I don't think I really like bartenders with attitude you know it just doesn't do well with me. So Myanmar, oh it is a beauty. It is a country that has a land area of 670,578 square kilometers, ranking 40th in the world. And this country has a population of over 51 million people, which makes it rank at 25th in the world when it comes to population, and has a GDP of 64 billion, as well as a country with over 100 different ethnic groups. But from what I've been told, Myanmar is a country that has an extensive history. And for me, I think we should really look at the history of the country which was formerly known as Burma and figure out how it started and how it changed the world's history also. Now, archaeologists have evidence that shows that a civilization of Homo sapiens existed in Myanmar approximately 13,000 years ago, which was roughly around 11,000 BCE, and these people lived in the Badalin Caves. But there's also some other evidence that shows that Homo erectus lived in the region approximately 750,000 years ago. And the evidence shows that they lived along the Ayawadi River, or better known as the Irrawaddy River. But the people of that region also moved out of the caves and entered the Bronze Age, and even created the first city-state known to humanity around the 2nd century BC. Now a city-state is a sovereign state that is consisted of a city or other territories. In today's world it would equal places like, you know, Singapore, the Vatican City, or Monaco. And the first of these cities were called Pyo City States, and they existed in the upper region of Myanmar till about the 11th century. Archaeologists have currently found 12 cities that existed, with 5 of them being the largest, and they are Bekthano, Myanma, Benaka, Halin, and Sri Kestra. And actually, the modern Shwezigong Pagoda is based off the Pyo City State designs of the country. Now, although they've only found 12 city states, some Chinese texts say that there was about 18 back in the day. Now, they were located all along the Irrawaddy River, and the Pyo people themselves were humane people who knew not of war and were even capable of making calculations based off of the stars above them. Now unfortunately, these cities were eventually looted and destroyed in the late 800s, when the Vamar people of the Nanjo Kingdom came on horseback destroying everything, even taking 300 prisoners from the city Halin. And after weakening the Pyo territories, the Nanjo people over time created the Pagan Empire, in which the Pyo people were assimilated into their culture by the 12th century, thus disappearing from existence. But within the collection of these people, the Pagan Empire built the Pagan City, which is currently known as the Pagan Archaeological Site, and it is impressive. The structures have indicated that this area was originally the capital of the Pagan Empire, being the first kingdom that unified Myanmar. And the temples in that area are the biggest tourist attraction in the entire country, as its mysteries still hide within the deep jungle bush. And as of today, 2,229 temples and pagodas remain. But however, in 10,044 to 1287, the Pagan community had constructed over 14,000 of these buildings. They were small temples, stupas, and monasteries. And the crazy part is, it was an area of only 104 square kilometers. But with over 14,000 of these temples being built, why are there only 2,000 of them left standing today? Well, this is because the Mandalay region in which the Bagan archaeological site resides sits on the Sagang fault line, making the area prone to many earthquakes. And between the years of 1904 to 1975, the region had over 400 earthquakes. And one of the biggest was in 1956 known as the Great Sagging Quake, along with other ones in 1930 and 1970, and the most recent one happening in 2016, which destroyed 400 temples, making it seem like every 30 to 40 years, this area is doomed to a destructive fault line. Now jumping back to the pagan rule during the 12th and 13th century, it also brought the expansion of Theravada Buddhism. And Buddhism began to grow within the country extraordinarily 
fast. And to this day, 89% of its population identify as being Buddhist. And one of the coolest Buddhist festival is the Buddhist New Year, which is very different from most New Years, which are generally in January in other countries. Going from April 13th to 17th, being a four-day festival. And the second day is one of the most important days as they celebrate Akyanel, which is a water festival. Which seems like a lot of fun because people run out into the streets with pots and water guns and they just splash each other and splash the ground. This is symbolic as it is usually the end of a hot, dry season, bringing in new wildlife and plants. As well, the water is a symbol for washing away your sins from the previous year. But what's fun about it is everybody gets splashed. You could be driving down the street in your car and it will become completely doused in water. But one of the biggest holidays within the country is, of course, Independence Day. Marked on January 4th of 1948 was when the country gained independence from the British Empire. It's also interesting to know that Burma or Myanmar was one country that didn't have British rule for nearly as long as its neighboring countries. It was conquered on November 29th, 1885 by the British after three separate wars called the Anglo-Burmese Wars. But in 1937, the British decided to operate the country as its own separate colony. But however, the beginning of World War II changed everything within the country. This is because when the Japanese invaded along with Thai forces, the British were already dealing with a fight against the Germans in the Middle East, which was a priority. As well, there was a Quit India protest happening within India, which happened in August 1942, where people protested the British rule within the country. As well, there was the famine of West Bengal, which claimed the lives of approximately 3 million people. And with all these problems and lack of resources, it was a nightmare for the British to control the country, and therefore they lost a footing to the Japanese Empire. But however, in 1944, the British forces, Chinese forces, Indian and remaining Burmese forces had regrouped and retrained, eventually recapturing the seaport of Rangoon. But shortly after that, with the fall of the two atomic bombs in Japan, it ended the war with the country being unified into a state of recovery. However, with the war long gone, the country has gained its independence, thus changing its political ideas and voice of its people. And it's interesting enough to know that Myanmar didn't become Myanmar until way after it got its independence. Burma didn't change its name to Myanmar until 1989, when it was known as the Union of Myanmar, having Sa Maung the first president of Myanmar. But the Myanmar we know didn't get actually formed until 2011. Being titled, although sounding very weird, the Republic of the Union of Myanmar, with its first president being Thien Sen. However, when it comes to the people of Myanmar, they make a living off of agriculture. As 60% of their GDP and 65% of their labor force makes money off of farming, with their biggest export being rice and corn and of course things like sugarcane, etc. However, the people are not all about just work, they also are all about play. One of their favorite sports and national sport is Chin Lung, which is kind of like a game of hacky sack, but it's sport mixed with dance. The objective is to have six people working together to keep the ball in the air without using your hands and passing it to one another as creative as possible. But this isn't the only sport that they love. They also love sports like soccer or as everybody else knows it, football. But when I look at Myanmar, I also kind of say to myself, this is a country that is making progress. For example, this is the first time we've ever talked about a country that only has one UNESCO site. And although it may only have one, it is very recent and just the beginning. On June 22, 2014, the country had the Pew Cities inscribed as a United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization site. And you could say out of many of these cities, three of them are UNSCO zones. They are Helene, Bekthano, and of course, Sri Kestra, which are now all famous tourist spots to go to and under the eye of the organization. But of course, you couldn't have zones like that without having young people being educated on the history of their own culture and other cultures around them. And Myanmar is no stranger when it comes to education for its people. As the country has over 250 universities divided into technology, arts, literature, and health. And because of a 2014 census, the literacy rate stands at 89.5%, and it is divided between 92.6 for males and 86.9 for females. And that is even with a low budget that the government spends on education, being about 1.2% spend a year on education. 
Now getting down near the end, we recently talked about the Philippines and how it's a country that has a lot of hydroelectric and green energy. Well, I'm quite amazed that Myanmar has the lowest amount of energy consumption in all of Southeast Asia. And although it is growing by 3% each year, the one thing that is amazing about Myanmar is currently hydroelectricity is the highest provider coming in at 74%, which in my books is unheard of. But the people of Myanmar are a very proud people who accept Except all. As in 2013, it was recorded to have 2 million foreign visitors, which was up from 1 million the year prior. And as of 2015, it jumped all the way to 4 million. And even though tourism is still a developing thing within the country, many people come from Thailand, China, and Japan, with the United States making up the fourth highest amount of tourists within the country. But that's it, guys. That's been us talking about Myanmar. It's a great opportunity to learn about a new country. And this is a country that I know has a lot of history to it. I feel like with the World War II, we could do a whole video just dedicated to that because it was one crazy place. But thanks for watching, guys. My name is Dave Wobble. This has been FTD Facts. Just to let you guys know, if it's your first time here, we like to take a lot of recommendations from you guys out there in the real world. So leave a comment for a future video that you want us to talk about. Also, if you guys really like what we're doing here, teaching people about the whole world and learning about different communities and cultures in a very positive manner, feel free, share this video. Also, you can check us out at our Patreon page. We always accept donations. Or if you want to improve on your language like we are doing here on FTD Facts, go to Grammarly.com backslash FTD Facts, sign up for free, and it'll also help you grammatically improve on your own writing in English. But thanks for watching, guys. This has been us talking about Myanmar. I'm really happy that many of you requested us to do this video because here on FTD Facts, we don't like to leave any stone unturned. And we've talked about a lot of countries in South Asia, but now we are proud to say we have dipped into Myanmar. It is a country that has great people who are concerned about their impact on this planet, a people who stand up for their rights as individuals and a collective, but more importantly, it is a country that has a history, a history waiting to be discovered, hidden deep within the mystery forests of time.